Hi everyone, today we'll be swatching all of these gorgeous art supplies that were featured in the last art haul video. A little package arrived um, about a day too late <laughs> to be featured in the art haul, um, but I wanted to include it in the swatching because I think they're a really interesting art supply. So, there's something I haven't tried before. Um, I don't know whether any of you have, but they are the Molotow, I think they're called One For All. Yeah, one for all acrylic markers. But look at that colour palette. Look at the beautiful muted colours. I discovered these via Crixis channel. Um, I'll put the name on the screen for you. She does some really nice sketchbook videos and her favourite art supplies and that kind of thing. So go and check her out. But yeah, she was talking about these and about how lovely the muted colours were. So I decided to go onto Jackson's and get seven different colours. I thought they'll be really interesting to use in my mixed media work and in my sketchbook. And I think they might be good for layering as well, which is what I'm heavily into at the moment. There was one colour I couldn't get. Um, they were out of stock of a gorgeous blue-grey colour. But um, yeah, I really like this selection. So I'm going to be swatching those as well as all the other supplies. Okay, let's make some space here. What should we start with? I think we'll start with the paint. So I'll just move all of those over to this side. Oh yeah, mustn't forget the Roman Schmall and these ones as well, the little dot card. So we'll just move these out of the way. Right, so today I've got two different types of paper for swatching on. I thought it would be interesting to use this. This is um, a really quite rough textured, handmade kind of paper. Um, I got this from a seller on Etsy, so we'll give that a go. And these are just two sheets of paper from a little, like, not sketchbook, but sort of <laughs> pad of paper that I had, a little spiral bound pad of paper. Um, so I'm going to use those for the dry media. So I think to start, I'd like to swatch the Mary Blue, if that's how you say it, um, watercolour from Italy. Jackson's gave me this dot card um, as like a little freebie. They're covered with a thin layer of film. They look like gorgeous colours, so let's give them a go. So the first one I'm going to swatch is called Orange Pirolo. <laughs> Pirolo? Gosh, that is a striking orange. It's really bright. Somebody told me that, um, I think they said they were all single pigment colours in this range. That's a really pure and beautiful orange. Oh, I love that. I'm on a watercolour buying ban though. This is like torture. <laughs> I'm going to swatch these colours and I'm probably going to love them. I want to buy them, but I can't. I've banned myself, as I spoke about in the art hall. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, the colours are really nice. <laughs> this one's called Quinacridone Lake. I'll hold them up to the camera when I've swatched them all so you can see them a little bit more clearly. They feel amazing to work with. You can tell they're such pure colours. So for those of you who like to know the pigments, I should tell you that um, this one is P. 71. This one's PV19. And so the next one we're swatching is called Green Gold. Gosh, they're all so bright. Really bright, pure colours. Be fantastic for mixing. So this one is PY129. Oh, that is lovely. Do you know, I've been wanting a green gold, but I've held off getting it. Have I found my green gold? Quite possibly. 
but I'm not allowed to buy any more. <laughs> Could I allow myself to just buy a green gold? It is a colour I've needed and wanted. I wasn't sure which one to go for. I think I have about three different ones on my Jackson's favourites list. Oh, I love it. Okay, next one is um, Ultramarine Deep. And this is PB29. I really like swatching with this flat brush. I don't know how granulating this one is. I mean, some of the PB29 seem to be quite granulating. It's very pretty blue. And the next one is a colour I really love. Um, turquoise Cobalt. This is PB28. I'm really impressed with their paints. They do feel amazing to work with. They re-wet beautifully and they are super pure and bright. The one I'm most excited for is coming up because they've included a Payne's Grey on this dot card. I think this is really quite an unusual um, colour choice for this dot card. They're such interesting colours though, that green gold, I'm really liking that. I wish I hadn't said that I'm on a watercolour buying ban. So this is their Payne's Grey. This is PBK 26. So it's a single pigment Payne's Grey. Oh, that is gorgeous. Who told me about this? One of my subscribers said check out their Payne's Grey because it's a really interesting one. I'm going to just see if I can lift it up a bit here. It's a beautiful bluish Payne's Grey because some of them are really quite a dark grey. But this one is lovely. In fact, all of those, let me just hold them up so you can see them. Um, I think this is just within the paper rather than being in the paint. So because this is handmade paper, you're going to see some, um, what would we call them? <laughs> Inconsistencies. Uh, but look at that green gold. I can't see the screen, so I'm hoping that I'm holding this up close enough for you to have a good look. Well, my first, um, try of the Mary Blue watercolours from Italy. Oh yeah, it says at the top here, a complete range of single pigment colours for unlimited mixing capabilities. 90 colours made from the highest quality pigments for maximum light fastness. Achieve intense washes as well as extraordinary transparency. I don't know what the prices are like. I haven't checked them out properly. Um, I would really like to. I would very much like to have that green gold. The Payne's Grey is beautiful as well. All of these colours are gorgeous and um, I'm just looking at the orange and the Payne's Grey and thinking how nice do they look together. I really want to start mixing, I think I said this in the art hall, um, a bright orange with Payne's Grey, blue greys and a more kind of neutral grey. I think it would look absolutely amazing in a landscape. So yeah, love those. Um, first impressions, very good. Okay, next I think we'll swatch the Schmincke Horodam Gouache Delft Blue. Let's see what this is like. Quite excited about this one. Oh, this is lovely. Reminds me a bit of the M. Graham watercolour paint and Thraquinone blue, was it? 
that I swatched recently for the first time. I guess as this is gouache, it's going to be fairly opaque. Oh, that's such a stunning colour. I always love Schmincke paints. The quality is very consistently good. Oh, that's really gorgeous. That's a real um, night landscape blue, isn't it? Yeah, that is quite opaque, actually. Bring that up so you can have a look. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's swatch the indigo from the Windsor & Newton designers gouache range. My old favourites. I've had an indigo for absolutely ages. I use it a lot. It's one of those colours I wouldn't want to run out of. So nice and opaque. I really love Winter & Newton Designer's Gouache. I've used it for, oh gosh, I think, <laughs> probably more than 20 years. Like when I was first painting, I used to use their gouache. Those. Just love blues. They're both really good night landscape blues actually. I think that the Winsor & Newton one at the moment seems to be more opaque um, than the Schmincke Horridam gouache. But um, we will see when they dry. So the next one I want to try is this, I'm hoping, super bright. <laughs> Orange Lake Deep. Oh, it does look bright. So I was really after a... Um, oh, I want to show you that actually because I don't know how bright that's going to look on camera. But to my eye, it's very bright. So yeah, I didn't think I would really be into... Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't think I'd really be into bright oranges. I'm a bit worried because I think I've got some blue still on that brush and now my water has gone brown I don't know whether to just let's go this side I'll go this side where it didn't get contaminated um, yeah I didn't think I'd really be into bright orange but as I said I want to try landscapes mixing the bright orange with greys and blues Oh, stunning colour. I love the evenness of um, the Winsor & Newton gouache. It dries to such a nice even colour. I'll just bring that up so you can have a look. I think what I'm going to do before I swatch the yellow is actually to change my water because it's looking a pretty gross colour and I don't want to contaminate such a, a vibrant pale colour. So I'm going to go and change that and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back with clean water. Wow, even the yellow is super bright. Do you see why Windsor & Newton are one of my favourite brands of gouache? They dry so evenly kind of feel like they're so reliable and you can mix some really nice colours too. Yeah, this is going to be a great mixing yellow. Love that. Super vibrant. And that orange is drying beautifully. It's just the kind of orange I wanted. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, so the last watercolour um, 
if we can have it in gouache as watercolour as well, which I think for the sake of this we will. I'm going to swatch the Roman Schmall Vivianite Blue Ochre. I wanted to get this one for ages and Jackson's were out of stock, so I had to wait. Um, and I've really liked the Roman Schmall paints I've tried so far. I have a few and uh, yeah, this one's quite a special one. So, oh, they're very sticky. I think it's all that honey. Just re-wet that really well. Oh, this is moody. And kind of dusky, is that the right word? <laughs> It's very muted and moody and, dare I say it, a little bit sexy. If a paint can be sexy, this is a sexy paint. Oh yeah, I'm loving that. I'm just looking at this and thinking. Could that also be included in my orange, Payne's grey, blue-grey kind of landscape? Be interesting to see how this one dries up. I might just extend it down here a little bit and just... See what it looks like when it's more of a wash. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I knew I'd like this one. That is beautiful. Such a muted, gorgeous colour. It's going to be so interesting to use that in a landscape. Okay, so the only other paints I have here are the Turner Acryl Gouache in Ivy Green. So obviously these are a completely different kind of gouache. It's cross between acrylic and gouache, so once they're dry, they can't be re-wet. Great for layering. Oh, it's lovely bright green. A little bit on the darker side, which is nice. Well, they feel really smooth so far. I had heard that some of them are a bit, um, I don't know whether chalky is the right word, gritty, but it might be um, just a certain line of these. I think they have some, are they called Japanese colours? Is that how you say that? If I got the right word. <laughs> just gonna. A bit more water with it there. Mmm, that's a really nice green. I don't know whether I have something similar to this in the Holbein. Um, it might be a little bit similar to their blue green, possibly, because I tend to use the Holbein acrylic gouache normally, and I thought I'd give some of these go. I really like the consistency of it, it's very smooth. It mixes with water well. And we have permanent orange, wow, another bright orange. <laughs> oh, this one has separated a little bit, let's just squeeze a bit more out of there. Yeah, I'm contaminating it with my brush again. I seem to do this to the orange. <laughs> Let's try and get a bit that hasn't been contaminated. Oh no, it has been contaminated with the green. I need to change my water more often or have two um, water jars. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and change the water again and then we'll swatch a fresh one of these. I'll squeeze out some more and 
Yeah, because I want to see what it really looks like. I don't want it to be contaminated like that with the green. Let's also get a clean little palette to pop that in. Make sure I haven't got any green on that now. And we'll get a true idea of how it really looks. Yeah, that's better. You can see that one looks really dingy in comparison. I've got a little spot of some other colour on there, but we'll ignore that. Okay, so ignore that one <laughs> with the green in it. That's how it really looks. Beautifully bright. Slightly lighter, brighter orange than um, the Winsor & Newton gouache. Really amazing colour. Very pleased about that. Because I don't have anything like that in my Holbein acrylic gouache. Okay, so the last one is the Luminous... Ooh. The Luminous Rose, I opened this the other day to have a look at it and it um, squirted everywhere which is why the top is a little bit dirty. Um, this doesn't show up as being very luminous on camera but trust me it is super super bright in person. It looks like it's actually glowing, <laughs> like it's lit from inside or something. It's a real bright neon pink and I bet this isn't looking anything like how it looks in reality on camera. It's so bright that it actually, <laughs> it's like you're looking at something that is lit. <laughs> I don't mean lit in the way that the cool kids say lit. Do the cool kids say lit anymore or is that really? Um, does that show how uncool I am? But I think lit is cool. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I will hold it up. I, it's actually hurting my eyes slightly. <laughs> and I bet it doesn't look anywhere near as bright on camera. I wish you could see the reality. So yeah, this is for sketchbook work only because obviously um, neon or fluorescent colours are very fugitive so they're not light fast that would fade so quickly if um, I left it exposed to the light so that will be sketchbook only. But my goodness, I don't know how you'd even, like if you were doing a print, how you'd even reproduce a colour like that because it is so bright. Okay, <laughs> I can't show you a true representation of it. I don't think I can. I hold it up and tilt it. No, it just looks like a pink. Oh, are you getting a slight... Do you see how it's slightly... How can we make this show? If I tilt it that way, does it look slightly more neon? It's still nothing like the reality. If you want the brightest pink you've ever seen in your life, get the Turner Acryl Gouache Lumi Rose. <laughs> I guess that stands for Luminous Rose. Focus. For the pens and pencils, I've separated them up into different categories based on their colour rather than swatching, say, all of the watercolour markers together and then all of the pencils together. I thought it would be really nice to see them um, in blocks of different colours. It's just a different way of doing it. So I think I'm going to start with the Luminance Permanent Red. It's um, rated 1 for light fastness, so it really is permanent. <laughs> So let's, how should we swatch this? Maybe just like this. So what I was after was a really super bright red. Not a color I would normally use, but as I said, I'm expanding my color palettes and trying some exciting new things. This paper, by the way,
This paper, by the way, is very slightly textured, just so you know. Always love luminance. Such a pleasure to work with. Yeah, that's a lovely red. Hold that up so you can have a look. So I think the next thing we'll swatch from this category, we have sort of rusts, oranges, reds and yellow. So I think what I'll try actually is the Molotow One For All acrylic marker in Lobster. Just gonna give that a bit of a shake. I did shake them up before I started swatching the paints, but they look like that. So they have kind of a bullet tip. And I think what you need to do, a bit like the Boskers, is pump them. Well, the paint comes through much more quickly than some of the other acrylic markers. They feel nice to work with. Let's have a look. Are they roughing the paper up a bit? I think they seem pretty good. Sometimes with these markers, they do tend to rough the paper up. It depends on the paper a little bit. I like the lobster colour. <laughs> it's a really nice rusty kind of red. Very nice. They're lovely to work with. I don't know whether I mentioned before, but you can refill these. So that makes them a little bit more eco-friendly than um, other marker pens where you just throw them away. I'm curious to try the vanilla pastel now. Oh, that's just what I wanted. I was hoping it wasn't going to be as bright as the colour on the lid. Because when I saw it swatched online, it was this gorgeous, very light, creamy yellow. You see, the colour of the lid is a much brighter yellow. But this is what I wanted, a real vanilla colour. I mainly want it so that I can layer over the top of it. That's a really nice light pastel yellow. So I think the next thing we'll try is the Pit Oil Base um, by Faber-Castell. This is the Sanguine colour. Oh, that feels lovely and waxy. Yeah, I can imagine these would be good for sketching. really nice colour, lovely texture, definitely something I will use a lot. And these actually layer really well over other materials. And I noticed when I was doing my most recent sketchbook video, um, sketchbook time 12, I think it was, that nothing would layer over these. I was using the black ones, but I'm assuming it's the same for this one. Um, so they're a really nice pencil to have in your collection if you want something that's just going to layer beautifully. really like this colour as well. So let's swatch the Luminance Dark Flesh 5%. I think this doesn't look that different to the Dark Flesh 40% actually. Well, it's a colour I really like. Um, I'm using more just recently as well in my landscapes so I don't mind having something that's similar but yeah I think they are very similar I can't really tell the difference it doesn't look a lot lighter it's a really lovely soft muted color
So the other two in this colour category are the Faber-Castell Abrit Dura watercolour marker in Sanguine. And they have a tip like this. So they have like a brush tip and a bullet tip. So this is good for laying down a lot of colour like that. You can really fill an area very quickly. And then with the other side, or other end rather, you can do slightly more detailed work. I find them so enjoyable to use because they're so chunky. I took um, the sepia one out with me the other day when I went on a walk and I used it in my sketchbook. I was sitting in the car, um, we were parked in like a car park in the forest and I just sat and drew the trees and it was really good for me because I mainly used this end and because it's so chunky it allowed me to be much more um, free and loose with the marks I was making rather than being really tight and precise. I might have to show you that um, drawing actually in a future video. I mean, I'm gonna be doing more sketchbook tours and things like that, so I will show you that then. Or maybe even in the next artist vlog actually because I'm busy kind of collecting different little bits of footage for that one um, that will be filmed over the course of like a month perhaps and um, I'll just put together a lot of the different things I've been doing and working on and it might be in there but um, yeah we have this one this is called orange glaze so let's see what this looks like this has been a real bright orange art haul hasn't it and it isn't a colour that I would normally use very much. But again, this is um, a beautiful bright orange. Let's just try the other tip. You kind of feel like you have more control with this one. I'll bring those up so you can have a look again. See, they really do um, have the feel of watercolour when you use the brush tip. And I love that you can lay down a lot of colour at once and they're great for working over the top of with pencil or neo colour. So I think the next category will be these colours I've put together. So we have some very natural kind of creamy white. Um, we have a titanium white here as well, which might not be that interesting to show you on this sheet of paper. So you know what a white um, marker looks like. So we won't do that one, but I can show you the neutral gray seven. So they're the same kind of marker. So we'll have a look at that one. But yeah, these are sort of very subtle, creamy colors and grays. I decided to put all of those together. So let's have a look at the Molotow. What's this one called? Nature white. That's kind of creamy white, so I'll give that a shake. Again, this was a colour that I thought would be a really nice base colour to work over. So it's a very subtle, um, just a sort of creamy white really, like a bit like an ivory kind of colour. Reminds me a little bit of the parchment colour of um, the Liquitex acrylic marker. I have one called Parchment and it reminds me of that. So really nice colour. Very impressed with these markers. You don't have to pump them for very long before the um, paint goes into the nib. With some of them you do, with, um, with these ones you have to pump them quite a bit before the paint goes down into the nib when you use them for the first time. And I have a feeling it's the same with the Poscas. These ones seem relatively quick. Okay, so we're gonna try the Luminance Primrose. I have a feeling this might be kind of similar. 
to oh it's actually like it's like the love child of <laughs> this pen and this pen <laughs> Just a very beautiful pale creamy yellow which I don't have so it's nice to have something like this I just saw this and thought on a whim that I would get it it's very pale so I don't know how well that's showing up but these are colors that I can really layer over which will be nice. So let's try the Neo Color 2. Um, these are the water soluble ones. Let's try anthracite. Actually, I wanted, let's put them on a different sheet of paper because I want a bit of space to be able to do a dry swatch and then try them with water as well. So I tend to use Neo Color for layering. And mark making, adding a bit of texture. For example, I wouldn't just use them to create a piece just in Neo Color. I like to layer them with other materials. Actually, so shall we? Let's just do a swatch here that I will put water on in a moment. They're looking very textured because this paper is textured. Okay, so did I say this is the um, charcoal grey or anthracite? So this one is dark grey. I'll do the same with that. Oh wow, a really lovely grey. A very bluish toned grey, which I love. And we'll do a swatch here that we will wet and see how well it wets. It'll be interesting to find out because I've never used Neo Color 2 up until now. I have Neo Color 1, which are water resistant. And this one is beige. Apparently, beige is the same in every language. <laughs> Yeah, that's lovely. I thought this was a particularly nice beige. I mean, beige isn't the most exciting colour ever, generally speaking, but I saw this one and I was like, that looks like a really nice colour. Of course, they would look slightly different if the paper were completely smooth, but um, at least we're getting an idea. So I'll wet those in a moment. I'm just going to swatch the Grey Blue Light Molotow Marker. These feel super lovely to work with. Really smooth. Look at that. I kind of feel like they're smoother to use than Poscas, perhaps. And I really like Poscas, I have a few of them. It was really the colour selection that drew me to these ones. Those beautiful muted colours. Mm, that's a nice grey. I always love a blue-grey. Okay, so the last one in this colour category is the Neutral Grey 7 Liquitex Acrylic Marker. Let's just get this plastic off. So you see these ones have a chisel nib. I think it's called a chisel nib, isn't it, when it's angled like that. So let's see how long this takes. 
Oh, it's starting to come. I can see the paint. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, actually. That was quite quick. So these are great if you want to lay down quite a nice large area of colour. Sometimes the nibs are a bit scratchy. But you can vary the line width, which is really nice. I just need to press more firmly there. That looks good. So by turning it on its side, you get a much finer line. Lovely colour though. Really loving these greys. So that's another one that I like to use. Um, sometimes I will layer over the paint marker and then other times I will add the paint marker on top of pencil. And sometimes it just gives a really nice sort of painterly look to something. So even though you're drawing, it looks really painterly. All right, so let's see how these work with water. Really curious. Oh, wow, they do wet really nicely. Oh, this could be an interesting medium to use. Love these colours. Very nice greys. Oh, I'm glad I got the Neo colour too. Kind of feel like these are going to be quite versatile. And great to take out on location as well. The um, charcoal grey is not as opaque as certainly this one here which was the is it dark grey yeah and the beige but we'll see how they dry just out of interest I want to see how I can layer on the top of the um, molotow markers let's see this pencil pencil goes over the top of them really nicely I, um, oh not that one, that was luminance wasn't it, this was the other marker, just see, yep you can layer really well over these, I think the Molotow markers are going to be one of my new favourite art supplies, really really good. I'll show you how you can layer over um, the watercolour markers, the Faber-Castell ones. See the pencils layer beautifully over those too. Let's just try this lighter pencil over this one. So let's flip this over and try the final supplies. We've got, um, let's do these next. I've got some purples and blues here. So let's try the dark indigo Albrecht Dura. Wow. I knew I had to get an indigo in this. Indigo is one of my favorite colors in like pretty much any art supply, <laughs> whether it's pencil, paint, whatever. And this gorgeous cobalt green, which I'm sure isn't looking anywhere near as green on screen as it does to me in person, but this is like a real turquoise color. 
So if you're looking for a lovely bright turquoisey kind of green, it's probably looking really blue on screen. I won't know until I look at it when I'm doing the editing. They look good together actually. And we have here um, a Neo Color 2 in aubergine. So I'll just do a quick swatch of that here. And then this pencil, the Derwent Light Fast Wild Lavender, probably look quite nice with that one. Such gorgeous colours, they actually go really nicely together, don't they? And the final one from this category is Petrol. So let's see what Petrol looks like. Oh, this feels so nice. I'm loving these Molotone markers and I love the fact that they're refillable. I don't know how you refill them. Do you take the end off here? Ah, oh, probably. I'll have to investigate that. <laughs> That's a really lovely colour as well. I do love a dark blue. They feel so smooth to use. They dry really nicely too. Okay, let's do the couple of pinks I have. Um, so we have a Neo Color 2 in Salmon Pink. That's really lovely with that colour here. with the, That was the dark indigo, wasn't it? Love that pairing. And we have, uh, this is called Skin Pastel. goodness the perfect muted dusky vintage looking pink I never thought that I would get a marker pen in this color I love this kind of pink so so beautiful okay so finally we have all of the various greens I quite like swatching like this in kind of color order <laughs> Um, okay, which one should we try first? I'm really curious to try the Molotto. Um, this needs a good shake because I can see it's separated. So always remember to give them a good shake before you use them. There's a ball bearing inside that um, mixes up the paint. Right, let's have a go. This one's called Amazonas Light. I think that's how you say it. Oh gosh, this is a gorgeous green. Now these are the kind of colours I really have always wanted in a marker pen. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know this might not seem like much to some people, but it's so hard to get beautiful muted colours in this type of pen. Well, I feel like it is. That's a really lovely sort of earth green colour. 
I'm very, very impressed with the Molotow markers. Thank you, Crixis, for bringing these to my attention. I can't believe I didn't know they existed. Okay, so next up, Polychromos by Faber-Castell, Juniper Green, and this is one that somebody, I think, mentioned to me and said I should check it out because it was a beautiful green. And it is, it's a really nice, um, like, foresty, dark green. And looks fantastic with that marker as well. Let's also try the Don't Like Faster Basil. Actually, this is kind of similar, isn't it? It's very, very slightly different, but... Probably if you have one, you don't need the other. <laughs> but I saw this one and... I really like the name actually, I like the name Basil and uh, I thought it would be a nice addition to the greens I have. It is similar, it's not identical. I would say this one is a slightly more bluish green and this one is a slightly more yellowish green but they are pretty similar but both gorgeous colours. And then I have my final dark green pencil, which is the Derwent Light Fast Pine. Oh well, this one is really dark. It's a very dark, um, almost grey green. Yeah, that's nice. I do love how greens look all together. Like in all the different, different colours of green, from the yellowy ones, the earthy ones, to the pines and greyish greens. I really love that. Okay, let's try these lighter ones. So we have the Luminance Olive Yellow. Oh, that's a stunner. That reminds me, actually, of the green gold, was it, paint that I swatched earlier from the little dot card? Look how it just works so well with the other greens. When you get a mixture in there, it's like the English landscape in summer. That's what it reminds me of when you get all of those kind of patchwork fields of slightly varying colours. That will really be a good addition to the greens I have. And finally, we have the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil Willow Green. Now this was also recommended to me Oh, and this is like, like, doesn't it look kind of similar? It's like a slightly lighter version of the Molotow marker. That's so nice. Oh, thank you, whoever it was who suggested this one as well, because I don't have a green pencil that is like this, and that will be another really good addition. They make a really nice palette, those greens together. So we may have to use this. We're running out of space <laughs> because I've filled both sides of this. So we may have to use this one. Oh, that has dried up. Look, the charcoal grey has dried up more transparent and these are more opaque. Those were the Neo colours, if you remember. 
but yeah I might have to just quickly swatch the green neo colors on this side here so we have um, what's this one greenish blue oh wow <laughs> I love it I absolutely love this one I'm curious to see what that would look like when it's wet so shall we wet it I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera a bit by the way when I'm swatching somebody um, left me a comment the other day where they mentioned this and I was notified of it in my email inbox and then when I went to respond to it um, it had disappeared so I think she deleted it which is a shame because I was gonna say that I'm gonna try actually attaching the camera or rather <laughs> putting the camera on a tripod or something like that rather than this little device that I've got that kind of is like an arm that attaches to the table because whenever I um, swatch or whatever it actually does rock the camera sometimes um, so yeah I agree with you lady <laughs> whoever you were I wish you hadn't deleted your comment um, but I did get the email notification so um, yes we will be figuring out something else but I've also got um, well I, I can't tell you yet but I'm gonna be changing something in the studio um, so yes I'm gonna be silent about that <laughs> because it's probably the next video that's gonna come up after this one and I'm quite excited to show you it's gonna be a studio tour and um, I've changed a few things in the studio so you will see all will be revealed but um, yeah we may have a slightly better setup for the filming I hope we'll see anyway look at this color the greenish blue um, is just beautiful this neo color when you wet it it's funny they kind of remind me of when I um, in an older art hall I had like three ink tents pencils and they're the derwent ink tents and you can use them as a dry pencil or you can wet them and when they wet they're so super vibrant and it reminds me of that this is a nice green too this is called dark green Let's just quickly wet that and see what it looks like. Oh, it's a little bit less dark when you wet it. Aren't they vibrant? They look amazing. Really like these Neo Color 2s. Kind of feel like I could have a lot of fun with these. Not the neatest of swatches, but. Right, and this was my wild card, the lime green, super bright lime green, which I'm going to mix in with all my more muted earthy greens. Quickly swatch, I mean wet this <laughs> and see what it looks like. Oh, it's got a really nice kind of pastel-y colour. Oh, I like that. Oh yeah, I like that. I kind of feel like it just mutes it. Is that the right word? Tints it? Anyway, makes it more pastel-y. <laughs> there you go, that's what they look like. And I thought it seemed a bit silly not to add water to the gorgeous pink one here and the aubergine. I just want to see what they look like. Um, it's funny how much this pencil here looks like a neo colour, but it isn't. I'm just feeling and see if they feel any different. Now, actually, these neo colours feel, I would say, a little bit more like the pencil rather than the ones I have feel very much like um, like a wax pastel. And these ones feel a little bit more pencil-y, if that makes sense. But yes, I was just going to do that and then my phone that I'm using to record said that its storage was full 
and it cut off the recording. So I had to go and transfer all the footage to my computer before I could come back and continue. But all I wanted to do was see what these looked like. So I thought it was a bit odd to leave them. I really like the Neo Colour too when you wet them. It's very nice. They still have a little bit of texture in a way, some of them too. So let's try the pink and just see what that looks like. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, so there we go. So some of them seem to be a little bit more opaque than others, but these ones are almost dry now. That looks amazing. That reminds me a little bit of, um, sorry, I think that was off the screen. One of my favorite paints, which is Aqua Green, I think it's called by Windsor and Newton. Reminds me very much of that. I hope you enjoyed that. I think this is gonna be a very long one. I'm not gonna edit this one down too much. Um, I think I have probably about an hour and a quarter's worth of footage, so I might edit it down. So it's maybe about an hour or just under. But yeah, this is probably gonna be one of my longest videos so far. And now we have our super high speed broadband connection. It's much easier for me to make uh, longer videos and better quality videos as well. By which I mean higher resolution because I had to upload the longer ones in just 720 instead of 1080. So hopefully I can upload this in the highest resolution possible for me on this phone and yeah and it will be a long one so let me know if you made it to the end because it's always interesting to know um, whether people do or not let me know if you really do enjoy these long videos I think it's just so nice to sit here and just do a really relaxing swatching session I hope that it's inspired you um, perhaps you've discovered some new materials today as well have you added anything to your wish list let me know um, but yeah I guess I'd better sign off now so I will see you again in the next video.